After the Dark Brethren convened, it was revealed to us that the Sea of Thieves would never be the same. The members all joined for separate reasons, however, it looks like the Dark Brethren will be more than a match for us, the Pirate Lord, Flameheart, and the rest of the Sea of Thieves. Even if there were to be an alliance between the players, Captain Flameheart, the Pirate Lord, and Captain Pendragon, will this be enough to crush the Dark Brethren? The Brethren consists of five members, all with different influence over the Sea of Thieves and different things to bring to the table, but all will be a great boon to their army if they do wage war across the Sea of Thieves. Davy Jones luckily has been dealt with, and is now damned to spend eternity aboard the Ferry of the Damned, his punishment inflicted by the Ferryman. Jones would have been a great danger to the Sea of Thieves, commanding the Flying Dutchman, the most dangerous ship on the seas to rival even the Burning Blade. Not only that, but Jones would also call and control the Kraken for the Sirens, which was part of the reason for the alliance with them. He also had a fleet of the Damned, much like Captain Flameheart, that swore fealty to him so they could return to the land of the living. This seemed to consist of an infinite supply of phantoms and ships. This would surely upset the balance of things as Davy Jones was keen to allow anyone in his ranks, even seemingly those who were at peace, unlike our ferryman who only brought back those he deemed were not ready to die. Davy Jones is also immortal as he cut out his own heart and placed it in the dead man's chest, which was kept in the possession of the captain. If someone were to stab the heart, the Dutchman would become theirs, so having it out of reach was the best option for the brethren here. If someone did stab the heart and become the new captain, then the brethren would have lost their flagship. It's probably best for all those involved that the Dutchman stays out of the way and Jones stays undead in the Sea of the Damned forever. The brethren also has been slightly weakened by this, but if you think about the capabilities of the rest of the members, then it seems to be a small setback. Next up is the Siren Queen, who may or may not still be alive. Without Davy Jones, the alliance may have been weakened. However, as we decimated much of her kin and desecrated her citadel, then I think she'll hate us pirates even more. After all, the humans did kill her husband in some sort of betrayal, so I don't think the loss of Davy Jones or the Kraken will be enough to sever her alliance with the Dark Brethren. On that note, the Siren Queen has control over everything below the waves, and we know Sirens are able to sink ships, dragging them down to the depths and have powerful magic. If you thought the waters were treacherous, then it's going to be much worse now. We're not even safe on land, as the Queen can attack us on land with her ocean crawlers. She has a land army to fight us, and the skeletons of Captain Flameheart who choose to take up arms against the Brethren. Speaking of the skeletons, Wanda the Warsmith may still command the skeleton ships on the Sea of Thieves. They're often seen fighting the ghost fleets of Captain Flameheart. She already brought war to the Sea of Thieves in Cursed Sails, where we managed to beat her back, defeating her for the first time. Another bone of contention is that Wanda may have control over the Reapers faction, as she was the one to create it. The faction is heavily associated with the ideals of Captain Flameheart, and the company representative is named the Servant of the Flame. I do think the faction will be following Wanda, as she recently had a figurehead crafted in her honour. And if they were loyal to Captain Flameheart, then there definitely wouldn't be a company-based cosmetic for her. Recently, the hideout has begun to glow following Season 3, suggesting whatever is underneath there is beginning to stir. If the Chalice of Resurrection is under there, then the Reapers will be able to create many powerful Skeleton Lords, much like Captain Flameheart creates the Ashen Lords with the Chests of Rage. Wanda has experience with fashioning wars too, so the Captain would want Aris' War Master to oversee his attempt to take over the Sea of Thieves. The Gold Hoarder has a heavy link with his own faction, as the leader of the Gold Hoarders. That means the Brethren has control over an extremely large amount of gold across the Sea of Thieves, with gold to fund a war. The Captain was keen to get the Gold Hoarder on side due to his massive wealth, and would need to promise him something big in order to get him to spend that gold. Having control over all that coin is fantastic for funding privateers, purchasing ships, buying supplies, and recruiting allies. The Gold Hoarder would also have access to any of Ramsey's old treasure chests, which could be used against him in the future. However, his mind has been destroyed to the point that he only cares about gold. The Gold Hoarder would be one of the most volatile members of the Brethren, who has no loyalty to anyone apart from his own greed. Rathbone could be the best way to start dismantling the Brethren. Although, one member could already be hard at work doing that already. Duke. Duke joined the Brethren as a result of his exile from the Bilge Rats, where Lorena forced him to take a step down. The worry with Duke is his charismatic personality, who could be used to recruit like-minded bilge rats and knows a lot of the faction's secrets. I know a lot of the community members believe that Duke is acting as a double agent working to dismantle the Brethren from the inside. I think this may be the case, as Duke isn't seen as totally evil. On the other hand, he has been linked to a lot of shady stuff in the past, and the Siren Song coupled with his expulsion has caused him to join the Brethren. In conclusion, the Brethren look extremely strong on paper, without considering what the Captain will bring to the table with Flameheart Jr. in tow, two more powerful skeleton lords who have sworn vengeance against Captain Flameheart. They have access to near unlimited wealth, the Reaper's Bones, a skeleton fleet, an army of Sirens and Ocean Crawlers, and possibly even the Bilge Rat Pirates looking for purpose. They can wage war across the Sea of Thieves, Seas and Depths, or will be aimed to fund them and might have a tool to create an army of Skeleton Lords with the Chalice of Resurrection. All helmed by the Captain, 
I can safely say the Brethren will be able to bring the Sea of Thieves to its knees. However, though not unbeatable, hope still remains. If there were to be an alliance formed to defeat them, I would argue that they'd be more than a match. The hypothetical alliance would include the Pirate Lord, with Athena's Fortune, Lorena and the rest of the Build Rats, Captain Pendragon and the Order of Souls, the Ferryman, and Captain Flameheart. The Pirate Lord would be a great figurehead for the alliance, where he would be able to rally much of the Sea of Thieves under him, those who are left, anyway. His faction, while possibly the weakest, is made up from the most renowned pirates, both dead and alive. Ramsey also has the most knowledge of the Sea of Thieves, at least as far as we know. This would suggest he has knowledge of many secrets and trinkets that can grant us great boons to defeat the Brethren, including the Reaper's Mark, which can grant immortality itself. Not to mention, he has a long-standing alliance with the Merfolk, who will bring sailors safely back to land and recover their ships from the depths, as long as the Sirens don't get to them first. I don't think they have the prowess to defeat the Sirens, but will be helpful enough to make the difference. The Rinner would supply the Bildrads, a group of daring adventurers not afraid to get their hands dirty. Other than that, there's not really a whole lot she can bring to the table other than her legendary background. Now, Captain Pendragon will be a force to be reckoned with, especially in an immortal form. For those who don't know, Pendragon was a skeleton lord hunter before he was trapped in the painting by Grey Marrow, where he managed to defeat many skeleton lords and even defeated Captain Grimm when he attacked an outpost. Pendragon is also the champion of the Order, who would very much like to see the skeleton lords of the Brethren defeated. If their skulls are given to the Order, then they would extract secrets from them. The Ferryman would also be a helpful ally, where he can decide who will come back to the land of the living, to endlessly supply the alliance with pirates to battle the Brethren. Not to mention, the Ferry of the Damned was able to defeat the Flying Dutchman in the Sea of the Damned. It's safe to say the Sea of the Damned is in a safe place, with the Ferryman having a firm dominion over it. And finally, the greatest asset to the alliance and the biggest threat to the Brethren, Captain Flameheart himself. I might go as far as saying Flameheart could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Brethren on his lonesome. As it stands, Flameheart is just a floating head in the sky that we defeat over and over, but is on the cusp of regaining his full strength. He has access to an unlimited fleet in the Sea of the Damned, something the Ferryman can't stop and Davy Jones had to bargain for. Flameheart created the spirits himself by using his own ships. We know this because he made copies of the Burning Blade and Ashen Dragon, which he can summon at will. Not to mention a fleet of Ashen Skeleton ships too, which is more than enough to take down the Brethren's navy. If he was able to claim his body back and the Burning Blade, that would be even more terrifying for the Brethren. The Burning Blade managed to sink the Pirate Lord as if it was a matchbox and was the galleon that ruled the Sea of Thieves in years past. On land, he also commands an army of skeletons headed by five Ashen Lords, all of which are more powerful than normal skeleton lords, apart from Flameheart himself. Flameheart would have no problem dispatching the Brethren from land or sea, but the Captain may hold something over him to swing the balance in his favour, maybe knowing his true weakness, or might even use his son against him. On paper, it seems as though the Alliance looks as strong as the Brethren, but lacking control over the Depths. They have access to legendary pirates, the Sea of the Damned, a huge Ashen fleet, some powerful flagships, and Ashen Lords. All I can say this will be a tough battle over the coming years and can't wait to see the flames of war engulf the Sea of Thieves. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. It really helps me out and I'd love to see this be my full-time job. The details for the weekly six-pack giveaway will be posted in the pinned comment from now on, so check that out to learn how you can bag yourself an Obsidian six-pack. Thanks again for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.